The objective of the Smart Room is to demonstrate the integration of evolving technologies and applications in the healthcare environment, including connectivity, real-time location information, advanced communications, and graphic visualization. These enable optimal dissemination of real-time information directly to staff and clinicians at the point of care, enhancing overall patient care and safety. In this bed, we have Jacob Smith, a 24-year-old male who is experiencing shortness of breath and syncope. He has a history of cardiomyopathy and heart failure and non-insulin dependent type 2 diabetes. His workup revealed that his blood glucose was within normal limits. This patient is a fall risk. This, in our low acuity bed, is Samantha Milhouse, a 26-year-old female with her newborn. The neonate Molly is rooming in and both are stable. The whiteboards identify the care team, both physician and nursing staff, as well as special conditions such as allergy or fall risk. The patient environment is integrated with real-time location from multiple RFID systems. The RFID information can be seen on the large monitor, portable tablet, or this handheld device. Our room simulates a traditional nursing station equipped with the Nurse Call Central Station and an RFID coupled asset management database. This monitor duplicates what's seen on the handheld devices. In this smart room, we have special RFID tags capable of providing humidity and temperature information either at the room level or at the device level such as for a refrigerator or freezer. This information can be seen on the large monitor or the portable tablet. The information triggers alerts to hospital staff or it can be documented, revealing trends required by regulatory agencies like the Joint Commission. As you can hear, because my assistant entered the patient room without washing his hands, an alert was triggered. In this case, I chose an audio alarm. However, in an actual care setting, a more subtle alarm would be used. Besides alerting the care provider directly, this configuration can then provide compliance metrics to administration and regulatory agencies. According to the CDC, thousands of deaths occur annually from acquired infections of which 50% could be prevented through hand hygiene compliance. RFID can assist with infection control compliance. In here, the hand hygiene dispenser is configured with an RFID receiving antenna which reads staff warn RFID tags confirming their presence at the dispenser. As they enter the room, the overhead IR RFID based virtual wall also identifies the tag. The system correlates tag presence at the dispenser followed by tag presence in the room to establish the condition of compliance. Typical of high acuity patient environments, our patient lies in an instrumented smart bed, providing the capability of monitoring patient weight, status of the rails and wheels, and patient communication. The bed can integrate with the nurse call platform, providing patient to staff communications and data about staff response or presence. Bed rail status information is displayed on the board. The patient's physiological parameters are tracked on a network-based high-acuity system presenting real-time measurement, visualization, and dissemination of critical parameters. In this case, we are continuously monitoring ECG, heart rate, blood pressure, and pulse oximetry, triggering alarms when there is a deviation from set parameters. The patient information can be distributed to multiple locations, including other nursing units, patient rooms, physician and home offices, handheld devices, alarm management systems, or the electronic medical record. In this setting, patients may be connected to ventilators and infusion systems. Fundamental to the acquisition of these physiological parameters is the ability to archive and or distribute this critical information. In order to communicate medical device data with other applications, there needs to be a confirmed association of the devices to the correct patient. The first step is for the patient to be positively identified through the patient RFID wristband. The patient bedside computer has an RFID reader that automatically detects the presence of the patient and the presence of the medical devices equipped with the RFID tags. On the screen, I can confirm that this is the correct patient, Jacob Smith, and then each of the medical devices are now associated to the patient. 
To show how ad hoc associations are handled, I will next associate a wireless IV pump to the patient by confirming it here on the screen. On the large display, you will notice the status of the pump device changes from available to unavailable. This is based on the fact that these are now positively associated to the patient, therefore considered not available for use with other patients. There is now a positive association established and the alarms from devices can be sent to the clinician's handheld devices. We have implemented a medication administration application using a combination of wireless, mobile, barcoding handheld technologies to provide real-time access to relevant clinical data at the point of care. Since the handheld device is too small for you to see, please look at the monitor on the nursing station. Once I scan my badge to sign into the application, I am presented with my patient assignment for the shift. As you can see, Jacob has been assigned based on the patient-centric identification previously performed during the device association process. Jacob is a new patient in my assignment and I can open his chart to view his demographics, his diagnosis, allergy, care team, and orders from Dr. Phillips. Also, I will see any scheduled procedures or interventions, including medications, assessment, treatment protocols, and follow-up items, along with notifications. As indicated in the patient profile, Jacob has a history of syncope and falls. Dr. Phillips ordered a falls risk assessment to be completed upon admission. I select the assessment and complete the items in the intervention. Jacob's risk score is automatically calculated, and it is 65 which is high and it can be compared with the previous score of 40. Once the assessment is complete, I scan my badge to confirm and this value then drives other interventions to be initiated per protocol. The system is set to identify complete medication orders including time and frequency from the physician order entry. For example, the system set an automatic notification that there is an order to administer an IV medication to this patient. I retrieve the medication from the RFID instrumented supply cabinet, which is located in the corner. I just got a real-time call using voice over IP messaging on my handheld from the lab. The message is a notification, which is directly available on my handheld, indicating that the patient has a blood sugar of 400, which is a critical value. At this point, I communicate back to the lab, confirming receipt of the message, and request treatment options from the physician through secured text messaging. With real-time reminders, my handheld notifies me that Dr. Phillips has responded with a secured text message back to me. The physician responds with an order to give the patient a subcutaneous injection of seven units of regular insulin now and to replete a blood sugar in an hour before meals and at bedtime. The physician enters the order from her office into the patient's order profile which is then transferred to the patient's electronic medical record. This is available in real time to all care team members. This screen shows to the care team that there is a new message to review and acknowledge. Now, to fulfill the physician orders, we will access the RFID enabled cabinet where the medications and supplies are located. The insulin has a passive RFID tag attached and the cabinet is dynamically reading all the tagged products in real time tracking the contents of the cabinets. Once the item is removed, it is automatically identified as missing in the web-based reports available to administration. We select a patient. In our case, the patient is already up on the workstation, and we wave the product at the point of care reader. This changes the disposition from missing to used. Fundamental to the process is the verification and status of the items, including lot number, serial number, and expiration date. This product is expired so we are provided a real-time alert to ensure that an expired or recalled product would not be used on the patient. We will try this again with a different bottle. The process is repeated and product validation is received. This RFID-based tracking and validation decreases the possibility that expired and recalled products are not used on the patient and that the patient record is appropriately updated. I go to bedside and access the due medication list via my handheld Prior to scanning the patient and starting the administration, I initiate a call to a colleague to assist and witness the high-risk medication administration. The patient's hospital bracelet is scanned to positively identify and confirm that I have the right patient. I scan the insulin dose that I'm going to administer, satisfying the five rights of safe medication delivery. I automatically receive the blood glucose of 400 that was resulted in the laboratory earlier that day. 
I can override this value with a new value if it has been too long since the last result was received. In this case, it is acceptable to move on to completion. This kind of collaborative care model promotes consistency across the care team. Once the dose and the order are verified, the witness authorizes the dose by scanning his badge as a confirmation of correct dosing. Both clinicians are assured of the authorization by receiving the confirmation via the handheld. I finalize the process by scanning my own badge to commit to the administration into the electronic medical record. We can then proceed with other medications ordered using the same procedure.